Recently, Brian Gudikins basically said, hey, these next 10 games are going to be incredibly important for Jordan Love, and, and they don't necessarily know if he's the guy moving forward. Um, at what point, you know, with you being a former GM, like, will, would he ever, put, if it doesn't work out, would he ever basically kind of face that, given everything that happened with Rodgers leaving and them kind of being ready to go on a Super Bowl run? Like, would he ever admit any wrongdoing in that situation? And ultimately, if it doesn't work out, who do you think this uh, this selection would fall at the feet of? Is it more on him or is it more on the floor who was kind of expected to bring him along in his development and get him ready? And he just, over the last five weeks or so, he's he's looked like he's regressed quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's everybody's fault, right? I mean, whenever you make, whenever you lose, it's everybody's fault. Everybody in, La, in Las Vegas was reasonably responsible for losing. You know, Pierce, uh, Chip, uh, Champ, Champ Kelly, all those. Everybody, you have a little hand in it, right? You've got to assume responsibility. You're here because of that, and it's the same thing with Love. Look, Love is having a hard time just throwing completed passes. You know, that's a real challenge. He's not throwing the ball with any accuracy, either short or long. The other thing is they keep giving the ball to AJ Dillon. And they keep getting themselves. He averages 3.1 a carry. I mean, when you take Love's rushing stats out of the Green Bay rushing, they average 3.3 yards a carry. I mean, they don't can't run the ball, so they're not really getting the kid in a chance to really where he can make some plays and the game comes easy. Aaron Jones is right the there, season. too. Yeah. Aaron Jones is right there, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that, to me, I think, he, I think Brian's right. Look, 20 games usually defines the quarterback. 17, and then, you know, it was 16 and four, but a season and then a September. But So I would say 20, but I think once he's going to know exactly what he has in the player, and then he's got to be honest with himself, right? Because the worst thing you want to do is double down on a mistake. You can't make a mistake twice. Like, if you don't think he can play, if New England doesn't think Mac Jones can play, if Chicago doesn't think Fields can play, you got to make that decision. It may be unpopular, but that's the only way you're going to get better. No ownership in Green Bay, right? That's been a topic of discussion on our particular program because the Aaron Rodgers situation where it's like right. we heard what happened with Kraft and Tom Brady and Bill Belichick feels like that'd be able to handle it. Do you think Goody and LaFleur completely safe here? Regardless, Because they kind of, I don't want to say kind of, I mean, Aaron, you know, kind of. Yeah. And, well, I, and the I team has gone Murph, to Murph, Murph, Murph's got to take some responsibility, the president. See, what he did, nobody talks about, right? He splintered the Packer fundamental organization when Ron Wolf came in there. And before Ron Wolf, it was Tom Bratz. And the Packers have always have been, since Lombardi left in 69, an organization that splits the duties of the coach and the, and the general manager. When Wolf was hot, when Bratz was hired from Atlanta back in the 80s, he was the GM. He hired Lenny Infante. They fired Bratz. They hired Ron Wolf. They gave him. He hired Mike Holmgren. That's always been the dynamic. Mike Sherman kind of messed it up a little bit for a couple of years, but then they went back to it, right? And so when Murphy became the president of the team, they changed that. He became the power broker. He became everybody reports to me. I make the decisions. You do the draft. LaFleur, you run the team. But essentially, everything comes through me. And now he's in much involved in the Aaron decision, the love decision, all that. That's collective. Right. So nobody can run from it. Nobody can run from it. And they've got to make a decision like Mark Davis did. Does this can this regime get us moving forward? And I think ultimately, when you look at some of the good players they have on their team, particularly defensively, they are better. Now, they don't play to that well defensively. Well, you know, cool. they've stuck with Joe Barry and they feel like he's the right guy. I think that's He's something not. to have a conversation about. Ty got so mad. You even mentioned his name. Ty just uh, literally just heated in his seat because it's the same year, uh, same uh, stuff for another new year. Well, let, ask this question. Say Jim Schwartz was the defense. Say if they hired Jim Schwartz this offseason and put him in Green Bay. What do you think their defense would look like? Like, look, Green right, Bay has clean. some really good right. players defensively. They, they're good. I mean, chuckle to – like, they're not they, – now, look, they just lost their corners. Their situation is – you know, that's harder. But you can rush. And when you can rush, you should be better. But the one thing they can't do is stop the run. They haven't been able to stop the run against good teams. Yeah, Paisan. So Mark Murphy is the president, the power broker. The board that would have to be the ones that would fire. I don't know how much you know the insides of that. They have like a board of all the rich people in Wisconsin, right? Yep. The powerful mm -hmm. people yeah. in Wisconsin. They are technically the Packers board, and they vote on stuff, and they make the decisions. They're running great business, by the way. Mm -hmm. The real estate right. around Lambeau, 
boom, and they're making like 200 million a year yeah. off of real estate. That we we had, know about. We had to see that we, yeah, we had to see their books because they're a publicly owned team and yada yada. They run a good business over there. They are very profitable. It is obviously a historic franchise, a lot of fans and everything like that. So they would have to vote out Mark Murphy, which would then. That but he's be- leaving though, Pat. He, I think he's resigned. I think he's like in his last year. Right, he's in his last year because in my new book, Football Done Right, I made a strong case for Jack Venisi to be up on the wall because he was the instrumental in the Packers. Thank you, Pat. He was instrumental in the Packers getting all those Hall of Famers, and they won't put his name up on the wall of fame for the Packers, which is an injustice. After he drafted twelve Hall of Fame players, I mean, now they say, well, he didn't have the general manager title. It's bull. It's really bull. He's the reason Lombardi ended up going to Green Bay. Now he died at thirty-three years old, so nobody knows about him. But Murphy now is no longer going to be the president. They're going to hire a new chairman of the board, and that guy will come in or woman will come in and run the team. So I think he's on his way out. He's already said goodbye. So I think 2025, whenever he turns 70? Yeah, July 2025, when he turns 70, I guess he announced his intention to retire. So that means probably Guti and LaFleur probably, right, tied in yeah. hip with him? Probably. So. Yeah. What? Huh? And, and Joe Barry? Yeah, yeah hope, hope so. <laughs> 